everyone how are you guys doing welcome to thrifty thursday video very very sore today and i'm kind of out of breath this morning um i just got up had my shower but i am in so much pain um it's the bottom of my feet that hurt today and my knees and um the heat index is going to be real hot today and it's bicycle day outside with the kiddos at the daycare and i'm just extremely exhausted and uh i'm waiting for the weekend to get here labor day weekend and so um i went to my doctor yesterday so i want to give you a little update on that she said that i um am no longer gonna be able to take the pain meds um as soon as my surgery happens and the bariatric advantage medicine i will be on for the rest of my life so I'm not looking forward to that. Um, they, they did an EKG on me yesterday. They also want me to go see a cardiologist um, for some reason before my surgery and have an x-ray on my chest. So, my primary uh, doctor said she was surprised that the doctor had ordered that. Um, it's not a requirement with Medicaid, and so um she doesn't know what's going on there but um that's the update and um i am going to continue on with my meds um until the surgery but she has cleared me for surgery um so now all i have to do is finish up my classes do that cardiologist visit and a psych visit with the doctor um and uh, just do the prepping it takes uh, to get to that surgery. The date will probably be the beginning of 2025, January, for surgery. And it is still a 180-day program. I'm two and a half months in. So um, she says, keep going. You're doing great. She said, your um, ducks are all in a row. And that's what they like to see, that I'm taking the initiative. Um, they don't want to do surgery on someone who's not taken the initiative and I've done everything the doctors have told me to do and um, I still have a knee specialist appointment in September and a hormone replacement uh, appointment in September so I am really really hoping that between those two things we could take care of the pain I'm in um, she did say that because I had endometriosis and I had a hysterectomy, the pain that I'm in um, is due to injury of my knees, but it's something that can be probably regulated with weight loss and hormone replacement therapy. So I will be starting that uh, by October 1st. And um, she says, I'm doing good. And uh, she gave me a big boost of energy and self-confidence yesterday. And she goes, this is going to be tough. I'm not going to lie. It's going to be tough. And I was talking to a friend who had, um, whose husband had the surgery. And um, the prep is the hardest part. The prep is the hardest part. And then after the surgery, uh, post-op, you know, by six weeks, you're feeling a lot better. So um, it's a major surgery. They are going to make me sign all these documents about uh, the side effects of the surgery, which will be death and um, infections and stroke, paralyzation, all these things. Um, and so I was looking through my book while I was waiting on the doctor and I was like, oh my, what am I getting myself into? This is going to be the most difficult thing I've ever done. And I was complaining to her about my pain because I am in so much pain now that I'm back at work. And um, she's like, we're going to have to manage the pain, but she can't uh, give me that medicine as a primary. It has to come from the knee specialist. So I'm going to be in pain for uh, a couple more weeks. I'm hoping that my job will be understanding. And um, if I can't move, I can't move and uh, I can keep my job. Other than that, there's a very good possibility that I will lose my job once again. Um, and I don't know what to do. I have court coming up, and again, with that, there's a good possibility I'm going to have to quit my job for that um, because it's not helping me at all that um, I'm in so much pain and I just can't move, and 
Um, I'm not getting my hours because of my health conditions. And, um, you know, sometimes you have to weigh in the good and the bad. And if it's just not going to be feasible for me to work um, at the daycare, I'm going to have to quit. And so, um, you know, I'm just going to have to keep looking for something I can do as I wait for my surgery. Um, taking care of my health is my number one priority. Uh, that's what I have uh, four or five doctors telling me to do. Um, don't worry about court. Don't worry about um, your finances. Um, you know, I have a caseworker who's helping walking me through everything. Uh, but this morning, you guys, I've been in tears. I've been crying because I am in so much pain. So wanted to give you that little life update. But um, I haven't had my pain pill yet today. So as soon as I take my shake and I do that, um, as soon as this video is over, I know I will feel 100% better. And uh, for Thrifty Thursday, I wanted to do this video. Um, I had gotten this book from my son to do over the summertime. And of course, we didn't do it. Um, but this is something that I think that we could do with our kids as poor um, single moms. And I was so excited to do this with my son, and I still want to do this with him. Um, and it's called The Thinking Tree, Life Skills Activity Book. They have different ones. Um, and this is just a really good book. I'm going to turn the camera around so you guys can see this a lot better. And then I will do an ending to this video. All right. So here is the Thinking Tree Life Skills Activity Book for Active and Creative Kids Step-by-Step -step Guide. And, you know, these are life skills that we can do as single moms. And um, this is what being a mom is all about. And um, we can um, do these things with our children and it's a bonding time. It's a time where we're teaching them what we know or what we don't know. There's a lot of things in this book I don't know. And I would like to learn this, you know, to be honest with you. Uh, my son's back in school and he's loving it. And he's so excited about the learning part. And so these are things, uh, life skills that we can teach our kids. And uh, first thing is with the holidays coming up, Thanksgiving and Christmas, we can teach our kid how to set the table correctly. And um, I love these type of ideas uh, because we take it for granted and we totally forget what we um, need to do. So um, this talks about how to use this book. This, this book is designed to teach you many valuable life skills. Search for the information about each skill, but make sure that you also practice what you've learned. And, uh, you know... Um, I like this because we can YouTube it and um, we can talk about it. And I like this one, skill number one, draw a picture of each book you would use to learn more about this topic. Um, and this is basic first aid. So I do like this because if there is an emergency, our children need to know how to protect themselves in an emergency. Um, take notes from your books or videos about how to handle the following situation, cut or scrape, bloody nose, or first degree burns. Um, I know all this being a CNA and I have had training on first aid and I used to be a med tech. I used to be able to pass meds and so I do have this training and, um, I would love to teach my kid how to do uh, proper bandage wrap, bruise or bump, allergy reactions, and conclusion. Watch a video or read about when and how to call 911. Every child should know their phone number and their address. And there's a little map. And did you come across any new words while you were learning about types of emergencies? Write the definitions of five new words below. So this helps you think. How to do the laundry, skill two. 
This is something I wish I was taught when I was a young age, but I wasn't until I was out on my own. And um, I have to admit, right now, I don't know these still. Um, OxyClean works just fine, and throwing everything into cold water works just fine for me. And I've been doing laundry like that for years. <laughs> um, and if it's got a stain, I just get rid of it. <laughs> so, um, but this is good to know. This is good to know. And I have a son who's very interested in helping do chores. Um, and then there's a word search and there's fun activities to do. And then skill three, sewing. Again, admittedly, this is something I have tried over the years. I have taken my home ec classes in high school I really enjoyed making pillows and doing those type of things, but I had a sewing machine that I could never get thread, and now my eyesight is so bad, I cannot see the little hole that you have to put the thread through the needle, and um, I think I still have my sewing machine somewhere in my garage, but I'm not sure if I got rid of it. Um, here is a word bank. Learning the meanings of these words, write the definition or draw a picture. Color the buttons. Learn how to sew on buttons. This is actually something I do know how to do. It's a lot easier than using the sewing machine is just to thread a needle on my own and um, sew up something very quickly that I do know how to do. Um, how to converse on the telephone. Look at this old fashioned telephone. My grandma and grandpa used to have a phone like that. Um, as a matter of fact, they had a rotary phone that you would turn and I would love to teach my son how to do that. Um, but I will have him order us a pizza sometime and call a family member and do all that. How to write a thank you card. This is something very simple that each kid needs to know how to do. Um, actually, they are teaching this in the public school, uh, how to write notes or essays. And so, um, you know, I need to teach him how to do his address and um, their address and where the stamp goes. This is something I don't know if they're teaching the kids. Make a meal plan. Um, proteins, carbohydrates, and fats. This is something I could show him right now because I am too learning about my proteins, carbohydrates, and fats for my bariatric surgery. And uh, we are going to be doing some meal planning starting on Sunday. And I'm going to be making a lot of protein meals in advance. And so we can do some of this meal prep for when he's with me and do some frozen meals also and follow this book and fill this out as we go um, and how to get groceries. Um, my son loves going to the grocery store with me and picking out what he wants and so um, I'm sure he's had plenty of practice with that. This one's a good one, public speaking. Um, I have a couple kids in my daycare who I think are going to be awesome debaters uh, and they're two. So, uh, public speaking, um, I encourage every kid to take a debate class to learn how to speak. Um, and it's, it is scary to get up in front of a crowd of people, but um, after you do it once or twice, it's not so bad. Um, how to dress appropriate and how to not dress appropriate. That's something that every kid should know. How to be a good friend. Um, this is something I could actually teach my two-year-olds in my class when we talk about kindness week and friendship week. We're going to have a friend's Thanksgiving, and so that will be a good time to talk about friendship and kindness. Um, how to be safe online. This is something I really, really need to talk about with my 10-year-old and um, really enforce is online safety. Um, I have talked to him about it a little bit, but I think I need to go more in detail with that. Um, screen time dangers. Again, I have said things to him about being on YouTube and video games too much. Um, I like how each one of these skills have little activities you can do. 
how to make your bed. Um, my son helps me make my bed sometimes, or he has made his own bed. So he already got that one down. Um, how to start a small business. This is something my 10 year old is very, very interested in. And so we can go over that. And I'm excited to teach him how to start his own business. Um, food storage. This is good for emergencies also to learn how to prep food and check expiration dates and, and, um, be able to, you know, know what you need in case of emergencies or um, if the rapture would happen for us Christians. Meeting new people. Um, it can be very difficult, especially as my son is entering into middle school. And so this will be a good lesson to learn. How to clean the bathroom. Uh, this is something my 10-year-old does not like doing, and so he needs to start uh, practicing on how to do that. It's not so bad once you do it. Um, how to care for a house plant. Um, this is something I would like to learn. Uh, I kill all my plants, and I don't mean to, but I either overwater or underwater, and um, I don't get the sunlight right, so I need to learn more about plants myself. Table manners. Um, this is something I learned as a little kid, but I would like to teach my children how to use an iron. Some of these things are very basic. How to use a dictionary. How to change a light bulb. How to apologize. How to study for a test. How to manage your time. I'm going a little bit quicker because I do have to go to work. How to take care of your teeth. How to use a tape measure. This is something I'm not um, really good at. I keep forgetting how to do this. Um, I know the big numbers and um, it's something I need to practice doing a little bit more with the inches. How to schedule an appointment. Virtual appointments. I have a bunch of those coming up with my bariatric surgery. Read a map. Not very good at reading maps either. How to make a cup of tea. How to host a garage sale. This is something I desperately need to be doing. I got a bunch of stuff I need to get rid of. Give a foot massage. Ooh, he could practice on my pain and my feet. How to find a book in the library. How to tie a tie. How to use a knife safely. How to pump gas in a car. How to wrap a gift. This will be great for Christmas this year. And like I said, there's all these different kinds of journals that you can get with different things. And I just love this, uh, being able to teach these. And uh, so this would be a good Christmas gift to order some more of these. So you guys, I just wanted to share this because these are life skills that we take for granted every day and we just do. Um, and you know, when I was thinking of me being a little girl, uh, my mom taught me half of these things. And um, so I think that's a problem that we have in society right now is we are not teaching our children right from wrong. We're not teaching them how to take care of the things they have. And you can tell in society, um, these kids are just stuck on their phones all the time. They're not reading, they're not learning. Um, I think every high school should have a Votech class <laughs> um, that they offer. And I think that every um, high school should give out certificates, you know, to uh, have a job when you get out of high school. And um, 
I think that uh, as Christians, we need to teach our kids about God and the Bible and give our children Christian education. Um, that is what is the most important is our families are our first ministry. That's what God has commanded us as parents. We need to be strong and courageous in raising our children. And um, if you are like me and you are a poor, uh, poor, poor single mom, um, low, low income, these are things that you can do with your kid that is fun. You know, making a pizza from scratch or doing the laundry or doing the chores around the house and um, teaching your kid, you know, how to do these daily living activities. And so I just thought I would throw this in for the Thrifty Thursday. You know, it's a cheap way of having fun with your kid, bonding, communicating, and opening up that relationship between you and your children. So thank you guys so much for watching. Please like, share, and subscribe. Bye.